Are you looking to pre-record some of your content for your next virtual event and you want to know what the best tool is to use or maybe you're already familiar with Zoom and you want to figure out how you can use it for capturing your pre-records for your next virtual or hybrid event? Well, I'm going to break down how you can pre-record your guests or your speakers using Zoom. And it's a great way for event producers or event managers and speakers who are not physically located in the same location, and maybe you don't have the production budget to hire a full-blown camera crew to go to your speaker's house. This is something that I've done with hundreds of speakers at this point. I facilitated many a Zoom recording, so I'm gonna walk you through the steps of how I do it so you can capture the best quality recording virtually using Zoom. Before we jump into it, I'm Logan Clements, freelance event producer, and I do want to remind you to like, subscribe, turn on that little notification bell so you get notified every single Monday when I drop new videos. If you are someone who loves even more free content about Zoom, event production, event management, running your own business, I am the co-host of the Better Events podcast with fellow event pro Mary Davidson. Listen to it wherever you listen to podcasts. We drop weekly episodes that feature on everything from what is a run a show to uh, fundraising strategies for nonprofits to what does an event planner, event producer even do to what's it like to produce at the Tokyo Olympics. Anything and everything in between, I do encourage you to go over and check it out. And I will link to a couple more resources that I have here in the description. Without further ado, let's get into recording in Zoom for your speakers. So here I am in Zoom. I do like to caveat that I am showing you what the Zoom features look like as the host of this meeting. And I would encourage you, if you are facilitating any kind of recording, for client, for a speaker, for a friend, for yourself, just making sure that you're the host of the meeting will enable you to have as many controls as possible. And so you, you'll see two of me because I've got two devices here. I'm in here once as my computer and once as my lovely iPad. And we're gonna pretend my iPad is my speaker and I am the producer behind the scenes. So my best practices would always be to jump in early and have your speaker uh, do a little bit of tech check, make sure you check their audio, their video, I'd have a lot of comments for myself about this camera angle. So making sure that everything looks good before you hit record. And then the kicker here is I often like to hit record to the cloud. So you'll see here, I have in my account on the back end, I've enabled both record to the cloud as well as record to the computer. When you're just capturing a single speaker, honestly, you could probably record to either. The one is just by doing it to the cloud. It saves storage space on your computer. You can do it locally if you want. If your speaker has slides, I would say record to the cloud because that'll help make sure that you capture your speaker view, your speaker view with slides, your speaker view without slides, so that you have a little bit of flexibility with your um, post-production or video editing to capture as many views as possible versus if you record to the computer, you're only going to get one file. So, most cases, I would honestly encourage you to click record to the cloud. Now, before you do this, one of the keys here is you as the producer, if you do not have an on-screen role, and that's often I'm facilitating the recording, so I'm not gonna be in their session. The, speak the, the attendees shouldn't know who I am. They shouldn't know my name, any of that information. I'm very much behind the scenes. And so here the kicker is, before you hit record, is you do wanna make sure that you stop your video. There's my lovely profile picture and you're muted. And then this is where I would go into speaker view. So now I'm just seeing my speaker. And the, the caveat here of why you wanna be camera off and muted is that Zoom then won't pick you up and show you at least in the recording of the speaker view because it will capture anyone who speaks. So I often will unmute and just say, you know, hey, you know, Mrs. Speaker, I'm just letting you know, we're almost ready to start. Um, I, will, I will give you the cue. And so then that's when I would actually hit record to the cloud. So now you can see here, I'm recording to the cloud. They do have that lovely feature where you can either pause or stop. What's the difference? Stopping the recording stops it. And so if I hit start recording, I'm starting a, making a whole new video file versus a pause is just kind of like what you might assume a pause is in any case, if you're watching the, a movie or something. It'll just pick up from when I hit play, which is a nice way for doing either multiple takes or you have to kind of splice it together and maybe you aren't doing a lot of video editing I'll often do the pause version versus the stop. And so in this recording that we're gonna, I will drop in here, you'll be able to see that it's just capturing my iPad. It is not capturing me as the behind the scenes producer. So then maybe let's say that we did one take, I unmute, I'm gonna say, hey, great job speaker. Um, I really like that. Do you wanna try maybe doing it this way? And um, maybe we try it doing it a little slower or a little faster. And um, 
I will give you a count whenever you're ready. And one way to do this too, if you are gonna be doing a little bit of trimming, a little bit of video editing, it is kind of nice to like count your speaker in. Um, and this is something that I will tend to do if we are using a video editor. So if we were to do that, I would actually hit unpause and I go, okay, um, speaker, we're ready for you. I'm gonna give you a count to three and then you'll be able to start whenever you're ready. So three, two, one. And then the kicker here is you wanna make sure you mute yourself <laughs> so that they're not picking up your audio in the recording. They would just be capturing the speaker and what they're saying and all that lovely stuff and they're not seeing or hearing anything that I've said. So I'm gonna hit now stop recording and I've stopped it and I can then turn my camera back on and say, great job speaker, I'm so happy you did such a good job. This is a great, thank you so much for joining me in Zoom. Zoom has become a great recording tool because so many people are comfortable in it. The number of speakers that I've worked with that are comfortable screen sharing in Zoom, but maybe not in a whole different platform or a whole different way, it just makes it so easy. And one of the reasons I probably should have started with this is why you would even want to facilitate the recording is often your speaker might forget to hit record. <laughs> I've forgotten to hit record when I've been recording myself. So this is something that just by having you as the Zoom, you know, as the event manager, the project manager, the content manager, whatever title you are, just having someone from the event side who is facilitating the recordings is so valuable. It's also great because this is my Zoom account. So this recording is gonna end up on my account that I can download and send to our video editor. No problem, I'm not waiting on the client to send me their own recording. That being said, a lot of people don't love Zoom for recording purposes purely because it is a little lower quality, but I think it really doesn't matter if you're, unless you're showing your event on a huge, like we just did one event that was probably like a 30 foot wide LED screen. Yes, we're gonna tell the difference in the quality of Zoom, but if you're presenting something virtually or uploading it to YouTube or using any kind of virtual event platform or even the standard projector in an in-person event and the projection screen, most people aren't gonna be able to tell the difference and we all are very comfortable with what Zoom looks like. And so I don't think you'll get any pushback for using Zoom as a recording tool. This is also great if you're looking to scale up because you can utilize people on your team or your event agency's team that are virtual and they can virtually support your speakers. They don't have to be in person. So I've just found this is such a scalable tool for recording your speakers. It's a great way to create pre-recordings if you're doing that on purpose or even like a backup recording so that you have a recorded version of your live speakers talk. So if they have tech challenges on that event day, you can just roll their recording. It's really up to you for how you wanna use it. But this is something that I love. I use this to record speakers all the time. It's a great tool. And as long as you follow my steps, you won't accidentally step on their toes and make a surprise appearance in their recording. Well, that brings me to the end of my video of how you can use Zoom as a recording tool for your next speaker session or even for yourself. Uh, but I'm Logan Clements, freelance event producer, and this has been another installment of my favorite tips and tricks when it comes to event planning and running your own business. I'll see you again next Monday. Bye, everybody.